Hello, friends and neighbors. This is Professor Bruce Hartfence, your host again today, and we are going to do kind of sort of a hands-on how-to video. Uh, what I thought I would do is tie some of these videos back to the chapters. So if you are going through the chapters or you've been uh, kind enough to take a look at one of the books, uh, we're going to go through and I'm going to add some videos on how I did things for the individual chapters. So right now, let's add a little text here. Uh, we're going to take a look at chapter one. And that would be, whoa, that would be networking, I did it again, models. All right, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about. And when I was writing the chapters, I spent a lot of time thinking about the TCP IP and the OSI models. So I'm not going to talk about those models specifically in this video. I would just want to show you some of the justification behind it. And the way that we're going to do that is with our friend Wireshark. So you can see that I've got a capture here, and there's packet number one. And if I scroll all the way down here, we can see that I've captured just a little over 300,000 packets. So what I did was opened up my laptop, listened to the network for a little while, and you know just did some stuff did some email watched some videos on YouTube did little trailers but remember that when you're sitting on a network this also includes things like talking to your printers things of that sort so when you see oh I don't know if we do a little SNMP here maybe you see some stuff like that that is your print drivers talking back and forth trying to find printers trying to find resources that you might have been uh, registered to mapping drives I mean, there's just all kinds of things updates so we got all kinds of things uh, like this here when we're trying to sit on a network and when we try to examine the kinds of that things that we do so the reason that we're examining these things is try to understand what kinds of protocols we actually have running and so what I'm going to do is just take a look at uh, some of the stuff that we have in our packet capture here so let's see um, maybe what we'll start with is just sort of an examination of some of the things you can do here with Wireshark now lots of folks use Wireshark just for packet capture and it works great for that and this is true of uh, just about any kind of, of protocol analysis tool but what I'm really interested in is our protocol hierarchy and so what we're going to take a look at here is the list of all of the protocols that we have running. So while this is looking through my packets, remember that's going through 300,000, and you can see that I come up with this list here. So maybe I'll expand this a little bit. Now at first it might seem kind of complicated to look at, so I am going to collapse some of these things. Okay. And we can sort of see, and actually we get really nutty here, we can see that all of the stuff that I'm capturing right here is on the Ethernet side. If I had done my wireless adapter, then it would have been the 802.11 side. So every single thing that we're looking at here, all 300,000 packets, or in this case now we're talking about frames, um, is going to come from my Ethernet adapter. So now if I open this up a little bit, we see the next layer of encapsulation. And this is an important idea when you're thinking about your models. So if I grab at random here one of our packets, we can sort of see that I've got a layer 2 defined here, layer 3, layer 4, and then my application. So this is how we sort of think about our layers and our protocols. So I'm going to be expanding these one at a time as we look at our protocols. Whoops, wrong one. Okay, so for us, we've got IP version 4 and IP version 6. That's pretty straightforward, but this logical link control here, that's going to be 802.3 stuff. Well, if we take a look at our percentages over here, we can see that logical link control is 0.2% of what we have going on here. And that's by percent of packets. If I look at the percent of bytes, we're at 0.02%. So that means that while I might have generated a lot of frames, there wasn't much to them. 
And then IP version 6 has a similar set of percentages. We got 17% or 0.17% of our overall packets. So the vast majority of our packets are going to be IP version 4. Now it's worth noting that we've got the address resolution protocol here and it's not called an, an IP version 4 protocol because or it's not encapsulated in IP version 4 and, and that's actually the whole point. There is no IP header in an ARP message so uh, that's why it's not counted with the IP version 4 stuff. So the vast majority of the things that we're going to look at here are going to be the IP version 4 protocol. Now maybe it's appropriate to stop right there and start comparing the TCP IP model versus the OSI model. The OSI model is what we call that reference model and everybody talks about the OSI model and its layers. But the reality is that all of the protocols that we talk about, all the protocols that you spend time with come from really two different places. One is the IEEE and that's all your layer 2 stuff and below. All of that stuff is IEEE. So Ethernet, uh, 802.11, those are all IEEE protocols. The minute you get above layer 2, you're going to be dealing with, for the most part, protocols that, that are defined in IETF RFCs, such as those for ARP, and IP version 4, IP version 6, TCP, UDP, things like that. All right, so let's open up our IP version 4 here, and we can see that, remember that we're leaving layer 3 now, and we've got our two big layer 4 protocols. So uh, we see that UDP constitutes 8.7% of our overall packets and then 2.54% of the overall bytes. 90% of my traffic is going to be TCP. Both TCP and UDP, again, come from IETF RFCs. And there's been lots and lots of work done on these. So there's several RFCs that go along with these guys. But the important thing to remember is that they're part of the TCP IP model and that they that they dis, they are described in the IETF RFC documents. So if you were going to do a search on any one of these things, you would just search for uh, RFCs, tools, and pick your protocol. Now it's not unusual that most of our traffic would be TCP based, and that's because a vast majority of the things that we do are all web based. And web or HTTP is a TCP protocol or encapsulated in TCP protocol. All right, so let's open this up a little bit, and there we have it. There's our web traffic, and here is SSL. So, what's the difference between these two guys? Well, uh, the TCP uh, encapsulates both of them, and HTTP is what we might call our standard web traffic, but then Secure Sockets, or HTTPS, is the secure version of that. Now if we expand this a little bit, we'll find out where all of our packets went. Okay, uh, So here we are up at TCP. And remember that TCP is um, going to be used for all the stuff that we're doing from well, in this case, 90% of the stuff that we're doing from layer 4 on up. When you first contact a web page, you're going to be using HTTP. But when you exchange information with that web page, you're going to be just encapsulating it in a TCP datagram. And so that's going to be just TCP data. And let me show you an example of that. So if I just open up TCP here, and so I'm just filtering in Wireshark in that same capture that I had before for TCP. See that it's chunking through and chunking through. So this is going to grab everything. But I can see here that I've got some, you know, some SSL encrypted stuff. We've got some unencrypted stuff. But if I take a look at this particular packet, we can see that there's no, no header in here. Uh, no layer 5 header, no application header. Now there's, so this is an indication of a TCP packet that exists without a layer 5 or without an application. So that's where a lot of our packets are going to go to. 
Um, if we see, we'll take a look at some uh, some TCP data here. So here's an example of uh, a TCP packet that has lots and lots of data in it, but clearly there's no upper layer header here. It just goes layer two, layer three, layer four, and then we have data. And that's the way a lot of TCP transmissions work. All right. Now, if you took a look at this exact same protocol distribution on a Macintosh or on a Linux computer or on your handheld device when you might be connected to uh, a standard IP uh, network, you would see the exact same sort of protocol distribution. What we don't see are some of the protocols identified in the OSI model. Now, these layers, at least up through layer 4, map almost directly, slightly different naming, but almost directly to the OSI model layers. It's really at layer uh, 5 that we see that difference. So we have we end at layer 5 in the TCP IP model, and then in the OSI model, we have layers 5, 6, and 7, and we sort of split out all of the these individual responsibilities. But we can see that in many cases, there is just the application layer header. And so this is why I sometimes say that it's important to, if you were going to study something, you were going to make a life doing something, you were going to try and make some money building some background and getting some skills in an area, it's going to be in the study of the protocols and the models that come out of the IETF or the IEEE. And there you have it. So I'm going to close up right there today, guys. Uh, I hope that this sort of helps explain some of the rationale for the discussion in Chapter 1. Now, before I go, I'm going to uh, recall you guys to a couple of things here. So this is networking models, but uh, if you want to do a little bit more reading on the models themselves, what you're going to look for is a couple of standards here. Uh, these are the, the ones that you can find the most information about the, the two different models. Uh, and then maybe we'll give you um, oops, the ITUT here, X.200. Anytime you see an X protocol, that's going to be one of the, uh, the ones that was tied to the ISO's OSI model. And then let's also give you the RFCs for the other side of the house. RFC 1122 and 1123. And this is where we have the TCP IP model. Uh, standardized and described. Now I'll also say at this point that the protocols themselves are not defined. The layers are defined, they're talked about, functions, things like that, but you don't usually see a lot of these documents say you know thou shalt use this particular protocol at this particular model. That's not what it was about, uh, but these are the areas uh, or the documents that describe how we do things today, especially these last two guys. Okay, and let's not forget IEEE and the 802 dot or the 802 dot whatever committees dot three dot eleven dot fifteen dot sixteen. All right, well there you have it, folks. This was sort of a hands-on and justification for some of the stuff that we talked about in the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols, Chapter One. Thanks very much for listening. Thanks for watching and may your packets always reach their destinations.